There are two different ways of getting keyboard inputs in Pygame, using the event handler and using the get pressed function. Both methods have their pros and cons, and in this video we're going to look at each in turn to see how they work. We'll begin with using the event handler. Here we've got the boilerplate for Pygame to create a game window and a game loop. I already have the event handler created and it is checking for the quit event at the moment. Let's add a key down event. Underneath here, I will add another if statement, which says if event dot type is equal to pygame dot key down. And for now, we'll just print out the event. I'll say print event. And when I run this and press any key on the keyboard, it will show us that the event has been triggered and it will output a bunch of info on the event. So it tells you the key that I've pressed, but it also gives you a key number that correlates to that button. And that key is what we're interested in because that is essentially the ID that represents each key on the keyboard. So we can change this from printing event to printing event dot key. Now if I run this again and I press the same key, which was the A key, you can see it just prints out the ID. And as I go through the keyboard pressing different buttons, it gives me the ID for each of those keys. We don't need to memorize those keys though, because Pygame already cross references the keys against each individual button on the keyboard. What we can do now, rather than having this print statement, is we can look for specific keys being pressed by checking against their key type. We'll add a second if statement here. This will say if event.key is equal to pygame. And then here is where we can correlate it to the different keys from pygame. So if I want the A button being pressed, then I type K underscore A. The K has to be in capitals, and then the A is just the letter that I'm looking for. And now within here, I can say print A. So when I run this and I press any key on the keyboard, nothing happens until I press the A key, and then it triggers it and it runs this print function. And this process can be repeated for any key on the keyboard by changing this variable here. There is one limitation to this that's maybe not initially obvious. If I run this again and I press the A key, as long as I press the A key once and let go of the keyboard, then it registers it. But if I hold down the A key, it doesn't keep registering it. It only registers it once. So even though I'm holding the key down, it's only printed A once. This is because the key down event has already happened. And to repeat it, I need to release the key and press it again. That's fine for single shot events. But if we want an action to continue being performed while the key is pressed, such as player movement, for example, we would need to add trigger variables. These variables are set to true when the key is pressed and set back to false when the key is released. So let's see how that works. I'm going to start by creating my trigger variable at the top here, just above my while loop. This trigger variable is going to be referring to a player or a character running. So the variable is going to be running and it will start off as false. Now I can update my event from before, which checks for the A key being pressed. And instead of printing out the A key, I'm going to change that trigger variable and I will set it to true. Now outside all of this, so outside the event handler, making sure the indentation is correct, I add another if statement, which says if running is equal to true, then we print running. So now I'm not just relying on this key down and this key press event, I'm actually checking on this variable instead. So this is my trigger variable. So let's run this and see what happens. So I press A and it's running. I've released the A key now, but it continues printing out this variable because once it's set to true, it stays in the true condition. What I need to add now is a way of changing it back to false. And that will only happen when I release the A key, which means that I need to add another event check, which is just like this one, but instead of looking for a key down event, it looks for a key up event, which means that I've released a key from the keyboard. So we can just copy this down, paste it below, and I'll just change one thing here, which is instead of key down, I look for key up. And now my running variable is going to go from true to false. So these two events essentially trigger that variable between the true condition and the false condition. If I run this again, as long as I'm holding the A key, it keeps printing running. As soon as I let go, it stops. But what if we want to check for multiple keys at the same time? Say, for example, we're making a platformer and the A key is used to run. But if you hold down the shift key and press A, then the character runs faster. Well, let's try it out. 
I'm going to add a second trigger variable above here, and this one's going to be sprinting. And again, I will set this to false to begin with. And within this first event type, where I'm looking for a key down event, I'm going to add a second check. So I'm going to keep the first one as is, where I'm looking for the A key, and that triggers the running variable. But I'm going to copy this down, and I will add to it. So now I say if event key is key A, and, and this is where I add a second condition, event.key is equal to pygame.k underscore L shift, which is the left shift button on the keyboard. So if those two keys are being pressed together, I will be getting an event triggering the A key and an event triggering the left shift key. If they both happen together, then the player is going to be sprinting. So I change that sprinting variable to true. And then of course I need to output this. So just down here, I will add a second check and I'll say if sprinting is equal to true, then we print out sprinting. So let's run this and see what happens. Now if I press A, it does trigger running as before. And if I hold down shift together with it, nothing happens. So it still just shows up running. So why doesn't that work? Why does this section of code not trigger the sprinting variable to change to true? I'm checking for the event key of A and left shift being pressed together, but it doesn't seem to be detecting. Well, each key press is a separate event. When we iterate through them with this for loop at the top here, we're looking at them in isolation. So it isn't possible for one event to contain both keys. This is one of the drawbacks of using the event handler to take key presses. However, it can be solved. What we need to do is instead of looking for both events to occur at once, which we know can't happen, is that we look for the left shift event on its own. We can remove this section here. And now we're just checking for left shift being pressed and that will trigger the sprinting variable. I now need to do the same thing to capture within my key up event to know when the left shift button's been released. So I bring this down here and paste it in. But now I change the sprinting variable back to false. Finally, I just need to update this section of code here. I'm going to reorder the two of them. So I'm going to move this sprinting check to be done first. And I put it above this first check. So now I'm saying that if sprinting is true, but I add a second condition here and running is equal to true. In that case, we print sprinting. Otherwise, so elif, if only the running variable is true, well then we print running. So why have I combined these two here? Well, the sprinting variable is triggered by the left shift key being pressed. However, pressing shift on its own doesn't make the player sprint. The player has to be holding down the A key first of all to start running and then combine it with the shift key to also sprint. So those two triggers are kept separate in the event handler. We only combine them here when we check them together. So if sprinting is true, means that the shift key is being held down and running is true, means that the A key is also being held down. So if both of those are being pressed, then the player is sprinting. But if only the A key is being pressed, well, then the player is just running. So let's check this out. And if I press A, I'm running. And if I hold shift, I'm sprinting. Now if I let go of both keys and I just hold shift, nothing happens. This is how you work with the event handler to take keyboard inputs. You might be thinking that this is quite a lot of code and maybe a little bit complex. So depending on the size and complexity of your project and the number of key inputs, you may decide that you want to use an alternative method. And that brings us on to the get pressed function. Running pygame.key.getPressed will return the state of every key on the keyboard. If a key is being pressed at that time, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. Since this checks all key states at once, it will detect multiple key presses, seen as they will be set to true. Additionally, it will stay true as long as you hold down that button, which removes the needs for using trigger variables. This method does simplify keyboard input, but there is a caveat from Pygame that says that this method is not suitable for handling text input from the user. So be mindful of this if your game involves the player typing in text. Let's see how to apply this method. First of all, I'm going to get rid of all of this stuff down here that uses the event handler for key inputs. I'm just going to keep this one event for checking for the quit condition. And I will also remove these two trigger variables for now. Now that the code is tidied up a little bit, just within this while loop, 
making sure that you indent it first. We'll check for any keys being pressed. Now before we run this function, we assign it to a variable. I'll assign this to a variable key, and I'll say the key is equal to pygame.key.get underscore pressed. And now let's just print this out and see what we get. If I print this, I'm just going to see a whole bunch of falses coming up. Now, you'll notice as I press a key, something disappears here. There's a whole bunch of these because it's detecting every single key on the keyboard. As soon as I press one of them, it changes to true, but it's somewhere up there, so we can't see it, but we know that it's changed. On its own, this isn't very useful, but we can look through this list and look for a specific key being pressed. So if we can check that key's value and see whether it's true or false, we'll know if that key has been pressed on the keyboard. We will use the Pygame key constant from earlier as the index to check whether that particular one is true or false. So instead of printing key, let's add in the functionality from before. Now I will say if key, and for the index, I will use the key constant, which is pygame.k underscore a, which you'll remember from earlier means that the a key is being pressed. If that is equal to true, then we can print out running. So it's the same functionality as before, but now we're using this additional function instead of the events. It's going to look through this entire list here of items, and it's going to look for the A key. If that's false, then nothing happens. But if it's true, then it's going to trigger this and print running. So let's try this out. And I'm going to press the A key, and it's showing running. Notice that unlike before, as long as I hold the key down, which I'm doing now, it keeps printing. This is different to what happened earlier when we used the event handler to detect key presses, and it's another important distinction between the two methods. Now let's try checking for two keys being pressed at once, so we can go from running to sprinting. Well, we're still going to use this key variable here, and we're going to now check for two conditions instead of one. I'm going to add an if statement up here, which I can actually just copy this first check into. So if the A key is being pressed, let's add a second condition, and key, this time it's pygame.k underscore L shift for left shift. If that is now also equal to true, then we can print sprinting. Now we just change this if statement to an L if, meaning that if both of those are not pressed together and it's only the A key, then we're just running. Now remember when I tried to do this earlier with the input from the event handler, I wasn't able to check for two events at the same time because they were separate. But in this case, it's possible to check for two key inputs together. So let's run this and see what happens. If I hold A, I'm running. If I press Shift on its own, nothing happens. But if I hold A and then hold Shift, it changes to sprinting. And this achieves the same result as before, but it appears to be a lot simpler. And that's not to say that one method is necessarily better than the other, but now that you know the differences, you'll be able to pick the one that's most suitable for your project. I hope this video was helpful, and thanks for watching.